It's the most wonderful time of the year here at Universal Orlando Resort. Hello everyone, I'm Craig Williams. Today I'm here with Rhino and we are going to do a little holiday eating. So uh, we came over to Universal a couple weeks ago to check out all of the holiday offerings in terms of entertainment like Universal's Holiday Parade featuring Macy's, Grinchmas Hula Day Spectacular, and of course the magic of Christmas at Hogwarts Castle. The entertainment here, you know, included in with the price of the ticket, all awesome, but that's not going to make you feel better when you're hungry. But luckily they do have holiday food here, and hopefully that will help us today. Before we get to that eating, I want to remind you this is brought to you by Dreams Unlimited Travel. If you like our content, you want to support us, book a vacation through Dreams Unlimited Travel. It costs you no extra money. You get the support of one of the awesome Dreams Unlimited Travel agents. So head over to dreamsunlimitedtravel.com today for a free, no obligation quote. Now, I believe everything that we're going to go try is over on the way to Hollywood over by Mel's. So, uh, well... <laughs> We're going to have a doozy getting over there because we're going to have to walk right past the Blues Brothers. We'll probably try to avoid them. I hear their shenanigans are pretty holiday crazy. And uh, no, let's, I, I, we're not going to do that. So we'll find a, a quieter way around. But Blues Brothers Holiday Show, something to check out. Today's all about food. Let's go eat. Our first stop of the holiday eatings that we'll be having is over at Yule Enjoy, which has the uh, temporary setup for Mel's, which is currently closed for uh, refurbishment. And uh, that's over in Battery Park, right across from Transformers, that area. You know it well, on the lagoon. Wonderful view over there. But um, there was a couple options we went with. We got a turkey dinner sandwich. There's a VBLT sandwich. Um, what the tur you can get a, you can make it a combo with a butternut squash soup. There was eggnog over there. There's eggnog with alcohol in it. We got a little, a little mix and variety of everything. So for me, I'm gonna start with, I think, to get us started here, the VBLT sandwich. Uh, that We did that, that was $12.99. We didn't do it as the combo. Um, <clears throat> that is described on here as rustic panini bread, smoked tempa bacon, Davina tomatoes, arugula, vegan, vegan pepper jack, and tomato aioli. Again, $12.99 for this. I feel like I'm gonna cough, so I'm also gonna have a sip of my eggnog right now to avoid that. The eggnog is, this is the non-alcoholic one, it's seven bucks. Um, it's their homemade nog mix. Um, we split it in half, so we each have our own cup here. Let me give it a little taste. This is the best eggnog I have probably ever had in my entire life. This eggnog, is like that thick eggnog consistency. It definitely tastes like liquid banana bread to me. So it's got a lot of these like cinnamon notes to it. I love this. This is dangerous. And this is non-alcoholic. Look at all the cinnamon in there or nutmeg or whatever, whatever you choose to put in your, whatever's in the recipe. All right, now a bite of the VBLT. This sandwich is very buttery. I was a little worried because when I picked it up, it was a little soft on the other side where maybe like, you know, when a panini sometimes when the juices are squeezed out can get, the bread can get a little wet. The bread is really good. Um, I definitely get some of that smoky flavor because it said smoked tempa bacon. Um, I wouldn't, I, I hate when they say tempa bacon because for me the consistency isn't the same thing. So I, I don't like when things are named the same but they're not the same, but um, I will say this is this is a very salty sandwich. I really like the um, the vegan pepper jack that's in here, and the tomato tomato aioli is nice, um, and the crunch of the bread really adds a nice texture. I, I like this quite a bit. It's just very very salty, very sodium heavy. The VBLT sandwich does have a little extra spice to it. I'm not getting the same levels of salt and sodium that Rhino is, but I think it's a solid sandwich. Is it a uh, $12.99 sandwich? Not in my opinion, but that tastes really good. And I, uh, you know, I hate being that guy who's like, I wouldn't know it's vegan, but really it's, uh, you know, it's a solid sandwich. I don't know if I necessarily would know if it was vegan, but I, I will completely back him up on this potentially being the best eggnog ever. I don't know what's in their house mix that makes this, but it is just packed with so much spice and flavor and it's 
creamy, but it's not too thick. Um, I'm not getting any slight hint of that minty taste that I sometimes get from store-bought eggnog that you know people have called me crazy about, but look it up on the internet. Other people get it too. Uh, not with this at all. I think like for the first time in my life, I'm like, I think this is what eggnog's supposed to taste like. And I'm here for it. I will uh, definitely be back to get more eggnog for sure. Maybe with alcohol in it too. We'll have to wait and see how that one ends up being. But first, I'm gonna try our turkey dinner sandwich. It is a turkey dinner sandwich, $12.99, artisan cranberry bread, roasted turkey breast, brie cheese, and orange cranberry aioli. And we had this at the media event for the holidays and uh, felt like it was missing a, a sauce there, like why, either needing gravy or needing more of the aioli. And I can already say from just looking at it, it is not heavy on any aioli on here. so. I brought extra packets of mayonnaise just in case we need to kind of make our own aioli with this, but I'll still give it a shot. I was concerned the turkey was gonna be dry and I'm happy to report that it's not, but uh, there's also this funky flavor that I'm not sure I'm identifying what it is. I'm not sure if it's from the griddle not necessarily being clean or if it's from the turkey itself and it's just like uh, a weird flavor that combined with it with the brie in there but uh it's not bad it's not my favorite i would actually take the the vblt over this thing but mayonnaise might make it a little bit better or i saw a bunch of people out there who were dipping their sandwiches into the butternut squash soup uh, so maybe that's the way to do it but you know what i'll let rhino actually try that I had a couple bites of the turkey dinner sandwich um, in between switching the cameras around here. And it's interesting because it is a cranberry bread. The brie is kind of like, I don't know. There, I definitely don't get any of this orange cranberry aioli. Like I don't, I don't really get that at all. There's definitely something on here, but it looks more like a pesto than that. I mean, there's like a mayonnaise or something, but. I'm not sure. So I am gonna do what you said and dip it here because over at uh, at You'll Enjoy, you can make it a combo by adding a savory butternut squash soup or a creamy tomato soup for $4.99. And of course we went with butternut squash soup because I feel like when butternut squash soup presents itself, you say, yes, please. So I'm gonna do a little dip. This is a very thick butternut squash soup. Mmm, mmm, mmm. Here we go. Just as I suspected, it tasted like a turkey sandwich dipped in butternut squash soup. I don't know that it did anything for this sandwich. It is funny, I, I, I think I definitely prefer the VBLT over this too. I wanna take a little bite of this soup by itself though. Soup? The butternut squash soup isn't really, I'm not really getting anything from it. It's not, it's not like packed with flavor, so. I don't know, I think I would skip the combo um, and I think I'd go with the VBLT, but I still maintain that I think the eggnog is a do not miss right now and I can't wait to try the alcoholic version. The time is upon us to try the, uh, the alcoholic eggnog. Now, our uh, wonderful uh, cashier, Valerie, let us know that there was actually three options because there is the Classic Nog, which is Bacardi four-year aged rum, that's $15.50. Or you can do Fire Nog with Fireball Cinnamon Whiskey, that's $14.75. Or there was the Captain's Reserve, and that was like a spiced rum in that, and we went with that one. Um, ultimately, I don't know how much that one was, but um, I'm gonna give it a try because what I can say right now is we, we, like, we separated our glasses again, but like mixed them, and I could smell the rum, so. Could be a good amount in here. I think we got a winner here. This, so if you, somebody like me, so here's what I do. I drink light eggnog and solely because I mentally am like, well, I can drink more of it because it's light. So I can drink twice as much to equal the regular eggnog, right? That's what this, their like uh, non-alcoholic nog is thicker 
and this the the um, the liquor and then with the ice it kind of is like cutting through that thickness but it's really preserving really those like really delicious um, eggnog flavors here we I think chose the correct alcohol with this drink this is so so good like honestly oh my god it's like with with the um, with the captain's reserve it just makes it like a lot lighter and easier to drink and this is good. This tastes like Christmas right here. I just wanted to point out one thing. Get get away. Get get away, Grinch. Get away, Grinch. The one thing I did want to point out, uh, as Rhino said, this I said, get away, Grinch. Get away. Uh, this does come with the ice, and that helps thin it out a little bit. Uh, she said we could order any of them without ice, and so we got our, our regular non-alcoholic nog without ice. And uh, although it comes in the drink mix containers, it is not refrigerated. So the nog is not being cold at all. So I would actually recommend, even if you're just getting regular nog, get it with the ice so that way it cools it down. And yeah, you can get a cup of ice on the side. Uh, they have that ability there. And if you do that, then you know, you can, it can kind of work it, but it's much better when it is colder and it does help dilute it a little bit. So just a recommendation. Cheers, Grinch. Our next holiday item comes from ye old London. No, I hated myself for saying it. Just regular London. And uh, it comes from the Potato Jacket Boothery or whatever you want to call it. Um, I don't actually know the official name, but uh, over there you can get baked potatoes, a hot dog, uh, and right now, as of recording this, a special holiday offering, the Jacket Sweet Potato, uh, which is a roasted sweet potato with maple butter, dried cranberries, vegan feta cheese, candy pecans, and pomegranate seeds, all for $10.99. And it looks like a potato. It looks like a baked potato. I mean, it's bright, it's colorful. I cut it in half, it's wet. I don't think I care for how wet it is, but here we are. Uh, I love craisins. I like candy pecans just fine. I like pomegranates. I don't think I'm gonna like them together. I don't. I don't want to be negative about it. But then you throw in the the vegan feta. Girl, I don't know about this. Right away, the textures are already scary. So it's like, do I get to try and get a bite of everything? I think so. Okay. Well, come here, sweet potato. That's what I call my dog Rocket because he looks like a potato. <laughs> Sweet potato, couch potato, potato. Okay, I, this is another one of those. Has he ever eaten before? I am uh, gonna tell you, I'm actually kind of shocked right now. The the way the pomegranates like kind of pop while you take bites of the sweet potato really adds a nice element of like sort of a bright citrusy, juicy flavor to like I don't know if I'm the biggest fan of sweet potatoes. I like them as fries. Um, I like them just fine. They're fine. A he nice healthy alternative to a potato. Prefer a purple potato, but that's fine. But the cranberries with this and the, like basically I get sweet potato with the, with the maple butter, not super strong maple, but I, it's definitely butter. Um, with the pomegranate, everything else I feel like kind of gets lost, but it actually, is very surprisingly good and it feels very holiday-y to me. So I'd like to see how you eat this and what you think of it. I'm gonna try to be just slightly more graceful than Rhino was <laughs> eating this and I think I might have succeeded but then again I had time to prepare so you know grace under pressure. Grace under fire? That's was that a show. sitcom? Yeah. Okay let's eat this. One benefit about the sweet potato is they uh, have salted the outside, so that's nice, adding that little saltiness to it. Uh, the pecan actually helps um, differentiate everything else uh, that's part of this because it's like a crispy pecan and then mush, mm -hmm. and it's all very mushy. And yeah, I mean, it kind of works. I wish I got a little bit more tartness from the cranberries and the pomegranate seeds. Uh, the feta's not bad I just I don't, I don't know this is like a it's like a sweet potato with added calories but I'm not sure if any of them were needed I think at the end of the day I could have just used a sweet potato with a little bit of butter and maybe even cinnamon butter and I would have just you know been fine 
feeling like I'm back at Rhino's favorite restaurant, the Texas Roadhouse. Oh. Texas Roadhouse. To get some of the sweets, we uh, made our way over to San Francisco Pastry Co. And this is not one of my favorite locations at uh, Universal Studios Florida for some reason. I feel like every time I step in there, something goes wrong. But we got the Coquito Igloo. Sadly, we don't have the star on it that it's supposed to have, but that's okay. This is how it was served. This is how we're gonna eat it. I love Coquito. There's clearly like a little cookie in here. There was no description of this whatsoever. I believe it was $7.99, $7.50. I don't know. I'll check. Ow. I'm not really getting anything from this really. It, it kind of just tastes a little bland. Like, I guess I can get like the condensed sort of milk flavor to it a little bit, but it's not very, I don't know. It's not very coconutty. It's not very, uh, not very like the, the, I don't know. It's not cinnamony. I don't know. I don't know. It's just kind of an amorphous blob that doesn't really have a lot of flavor. I don't like it. For $7.49, you're gonna eat every single bite of this, whether or not you like it. So congratulations. You chose this, it wasn't me. Definitely wasn't me, it was me. It might've been me. I might've chosen this. You recommend I might've. Uh, I think we all have this friend out there that invites you over to a holiday party and they're like, let me make you cookies. Let me make you a drink. And they make it for you. And out of politeness, you have to be like, Mm, this is really good. I feel like that's this is the equivalent here. Like if someone from Universal came out and asked us right now to help their feelings, I'd probably say, mm, it's really good. But <laughs> honestly, it's it, Rhino's correct. It's not it's not very flavorful. I mean, there is like a, a hint of coconut, a hint of cinnamon, like a little it's all a little bit there, but it just didn't go far enough. Uh, feels like a waste of calories like I just I need something that's it's not a sweet that I would return to at all it was pretty but you know what we're past the age of make it cute for Instagram no one mm -hmm. no one cares anymore make it good and then make it pretty too do both but I, I don't it's I don't regret that we tried it but I will never eat this again no. our final stop on our food journey today brings us to the Today Cafe. Wow, look at that. And here we're getting the gingerbread cream pie, which is actually a whoopie pie, is what most would say, I think, but they chose to leave the whoopie name out of it. Maybe because she's not on the Today Show and she's on The View. So I don't know. There's a cute little gingerbread man on top. I'm gonna move him aside. Cut this baby in Oh, this was a little more firm than I expected it to be. So maybe that's why they're not using the word whoopie pie. Oh, oh no. This is very firm. Tis firm! Okay, I don't, okay. Well, this is gonna make me sad because in my mind, I think this is gonna taste some way. Now I'm worried it's gonna taste another way. Okay. What are it, you cutting through? It was glued to the bottom. Judgy, judgy, judgy. Messy, messy, okay. Whatever's in the middle reminds me of what the kids in Honey, I Shrunk the Kids are jumping into. Well, that would be an oatmeal, an oatmeal cream oatmeal pie. pie. I did it to myself. I said whoopie pie and I started thinking this should be really soft like a whoopie pie, but it's a little, it's a lot more firmer, but it's got a nice gingerbread flavor that comes through that I really enjoy. And then nice like cool, whoopy filling here. It's very nice. It's good. Honestly, it's pretty solid. I'm not against it. I like it. I'm glad we're splitting it. It feels like it would be like, for me, a little indulgent to eat the whole thing, but I think it was under $7 as well. So not bad compared to some of the other stuff we got. Definitely better than that Coquito wig loop. It should be noted that this does come out of a refrigerator, so uh, it is gonna probably need to come to temperature a little bit, but if you think about it, you know, you're coming to Today Cafe, you're hopefully getting the Carnegie, you're getting that you're getting that nice uh, pastrami sandwich, or, you know, maybe Al's butternut squash. I, I don't know what you're getting here, but while you're eating that, then your whoopie pie is coming to temperature. 
Uh, so maybe that's the case for it. We're just eating this too quickly, but I'm excited. I love gingerbread. Who doesn't love gingerbread? You're a monster. I wish before I started speaking about the refrigerator and stuff that I would have actually bit it because it has nothing to do with the refrigerator. It just has to do with the fact that the cake is not burnt, but it's definitely overcooked. So this is not a, a moist, soft cake. This is dense and chewy. I mean, it's, I mean, that works with the gingerbread aspect of it, but it still does have that where it's like, oh, they took this out of the oven like two minutes too late. Otherwise, I feel like this would be really, really, really perfect. But the flavor is there, just slightly overcooked for my taste. Uh, but that whipped inside, it's like, it is like the creamiest, fluffiest Cool Whip in the world. Uh, it's, it's better than the filling in an oatmeal cream pie. So this is miles above the other dessert that we had. Honestly though, I, it's been a little while since we had that media event. The best thing that we had, which I, it might be available here somewhere else, it was this vegan cookie butter dessert. And that was probably the best thing that, that I've tasted in terms of the desserts here. But like always, Universal and desserts just kind of disappoint me a little bit. But thinking back on this day, I think I might be disappointed in kind of everything, not really, but not the eggnog. Uh, let me think about it while we finish this. We'll be back to wrap up with our final thoughts. Our food journey is over for the day. And uh, thinking back on it, um, I do want to say I definitely agree with Craig about the um, gingerbread cream pie because I said it was like they took it out of the oven at the right time, but they didn't take it out of the pan. So it continued to cook and got a little too firm. Um, not bad, but just was like, mm. um, so I didn't really love any of the desserts. And then um, I think I liked the VBLT, uh, if that's what it was called. Um, let me just double check that really quick here. It was, a, it, vegan BLT. a vegan BLT. Who would have thought? I think that was my favorite thing of the day besides that delicious eggnog. Like if I am back, which I am gonna be back before the holidays because I'm coming back tomorrow, I think I'm gonna get more eggnog tomorrow because that thing was delicious. Um, and for seven bucks, I felt like of everything we had, it was it, honestly, it wasn't bad for how much you're getting, especially the, the non-alcoholic one. And then I say, I say give the alcoholic one a try if you're up for it, but that's just me. Um, you know, I'm happy we did this. Happy to get into the holiday spirit. I need a nap now though. I can't believe we're walking out of here saying the eggnog was the real winner of the day, but that's just how it is. Whether you decide to have it just as it is or add in that little extra spirit to it, I mean, that eggnog was solid. Universal should be proud of that. Whoever developed that concoction of eggnog should also be in charge of the desserts, take them to the next level, really make them stand out. Because honestly, the desserts were pretty. They were fun to look at. They just didn't quite live up to the actual look of the desserts. And that holiday turkey, just, just disappointing. I remember we came over years ago for like a holiday turkey press sandwich, mm -hmm. uh, potentially at the exact same spot, and we are disappointed. So I feel like they just haven't quite nailed it yet. And yeah, that's a it's, it's a bummer. It's It shouldn't be that hard to do. Just add a little extra moisture to it, uh, whether it's because of, you know, an aioli or if it's with gravy, just something to take it to the next level. So that's the only thing I'd recommend. But that the VBLT, I mean, that was in terms of everything else we had that wasn't eggnog that was the best thing and uh the unfortunate part of that is there's nothing holiday about it it's on that special holiday menu but it's it is what it is uh the only other thing i'll say is with, with the soup the more i thought about it that soup was it's okay with the pepita in there it had a nice little crunch you know little little saltiness too maybe it was on the overly creamy side, but I'm not gonna knock it for that. I'd rather it be creamy than watery. Chunky. Chunky, I'd rather a chunky soup than a watery soup. So overall, am I feeling uh, the holiday spirit through Universal's food and, and desserts? No, am I feeling it from that eggnog? You bet I am. And uh, I love much like Rhino, I will be back for more eggnog. But for now, we're gonna say goodbye to Universal Orlando Resort. I mean, specifically Universal Studios, Florida. Uh, Islands of Adventure does have holiday treats too, especially around Grinchmas area. We just didn't make it over. I mean, we could have gone to the Croissant Moon Cafe Bakery, but yeah, we, we just, I feel like we got enough done at 
Universal Studios, so we didn't need to go to Islands of Adventure. I'm okay with it. I'm okay with it. It's something to do maybe another time that we're here. But uh, if you want to support us more, book a vacation through Dreams Unlimited Travel. Get a free no-obligation quote today at dreamsunlimitedtravel.com. Uh, if you were watching this on YouTube, hit the thumbs up, subscribe to the channel, leave comments, questions, video suggestions in the comments section. If you are listening to this, subscribe wherever you listen to podcasts and leave us a positive rating and review when possible. But on behalf of myself and the Holly Jolly Rhino, mm-hmm. I want to say uh, we hope you enjoyed watching us eat and drink and be merry. And we will see you again real soon next time. We're here at Universal Orlando Resort. Take care, bye-bye, and remember, we finally changed the name.